You were invited to worship with an ordained man of God, Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles' Doctrine Incorporated at 8010 Rockbridge Road in Lithonia. This is Come Expecting a Miracle Broadcast. Listen now to the inspiring message of preaching and teaching with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant. We'll go before the Lord in prayer. Precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to come before you once again. Help us, Lord Jesus, to take advantage of all opportunities that you give us to repent, to fix what we could not do on yesterday. Help us, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask right now, Lord Jesus, that you would come forth and anoint this radio station broadcast on this afternoon. You go forth, Lord God, and ride the radio waves throughout Atlanta and touch everyone that is under the sound of our voices. To everyone that needs to be healed, heal. To everyone that needs peace in the mind, let peace be still. And Lord, we pray in this right now that you would open up the hearts and the minds of the people. And to everyone that hath an ear, please, Lord, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord have to say unto Atlanta and unto the church on this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray, and without further ado, we'll turn it over to Bishop L.T. Good afternoon, Bishop. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. You know, back in the day, in the 70s, 273. I was an entertainer. Uh, uh, there was a group, I believe, called Sly and the Family Stone. I believe it was them that sang the song called Everyday People. Not because of fly, I just said that from the old school. But that's what I want to talk about today. Everyday people. God uses everyday people. I think that as believers, we don't take the opportunities that have been given us in Christ, take advantage of the opportunity for change, to be blessed. It is written that he that is in Christ Jesus is a creature. And I think they said, what, old things have passed away and all things become new. That word new creature means like a new building. You've been uh, renovated. <laughs> Your new building, new creature. All things, the whole, whatever has passed away. I was uh, having a Bible study with the Filipino brethren the other day. I'm an international bishop, so. Uh, I have international Bible studies throughout the week with the various countries. And we got on this subject, the Lord kind of touched my heart. When we think about God looking for a man to fill in the gap, we think about the Lord using people. Sometimes we Think about something extraordinary, somebody super special. But I'm here to tell you that God uses everyday people. But unless you surrender yourself to God, you'll never know what's in you. So many times we give up on ourselves. We have reached a level of Complacency or conveniency or compromise 
And we say we've gone as far as we go. We lose hope and we look at ourselves and say, there's nothing else I can do. But we're looking at ourselves through our own eyes and not the eyes of God Almighty. You see, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so, many times, as far as we can look, is the bread, the outer, the flesh. But then we forget the other part. But by every word, that's a spiritual side. Not many mighty, not many rich, not many noble men are called. But the majority of people that God calls are everyday people. You'd be surprised when you think you've gone as far as you can go, or you think your life is just going to work, going to church, and that's it. You'd be surprised what's on the other side. If you just surrender yourself to God and ask God to show you Lord, what is your will. <clears throat> Let's open up the story book called the Bible. This is a, a section. This story book is called uh, There's a King in Your House. God needed a new king. And Saul had messed up. So he told Samuel, go to the house of a man named Jesse. Just an ordinary man with several sons. But let Jesse know that there's a king in his house. Jesse hears a knock on the door one day, and there is Samuel. You come in peace? The prophet said, yeah, go, go and sit me. Uh, and he says, you know, Jesse, there's a king in your life. And Jesse said, really? <laughs> there's a king in my house. We are an ordinary family with ordinary sons. And the God of Israel, you say, told you that there's a king in my house. Well, he called all the boys together. And he called the oldest one first. Samuel looked at him and saw how big he was. Strong, just like King Saul. Then, still out head and shoulders, and Tommy said, this must be the king. You see, we can only see so far. But God can see what's in the inside of us. And you'll never know what's in you until you surrender yourself to God. And you think you're just the everyday person, and you are, but you think that's all your life consists of. You'll never know until you say, God, show me what your will is. And so the brother came, God said, I've already rejected this cat. Man looked on the outer appearance. That's what I'm trying to tell you. God said, but I see behind that shell. I look at the heart. I think it was the second brother, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh brother, what have you. You see, when God gives you, sends you on a mission, you don't want to stop until it's complete. You don't make excuses for why you didn't obey and you have to trust in God's word. Everything on the outer appearance didn't look good. But Samuel knew God sent him to that address. I, I'm just talking. I imagine he, he checked his address book. Now, this is Jesse. This is the right hour. And so uh, Samuel said, wait a minute now. Is there anybody else? Now, when Samuel told Jesse there's a king in your house, now, he called everybody, the father called everybody he thought was king material. Right. You know, the building, the stone that the builders reject become the head of the corner sometimes. People who you least expect is God's choice. 
sometimes. And so he says, "Yeah, we 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 got the younger boy. He's out there keeping the sheep, cleaning up the dung. Here. Go get him." David out there, a young man jumping around, turning flip, singing song, shooting the slingshot at the birds, playing with the sheep, smelling like dumb. David! Father wants you. Everybody sitting, twirling their thumb because they know David. David was a character. His brother saw he was just arrogant. David was something else. You know, he take chances. He fought a bear and killed him. Didn't even call for help. Then he said, I'm, and fought a lion, endangering his life. David is just careless. Lord have mercy. And David comes running through the door. And God said, that's him. Oh, I felt a virtual man. He took that five quarts of oil and he poured it all over that boy's head, his head to his feet. And could you imagine the family? They were in awe. There was a king in our house all along that looked just like us. And we didn't even know it. Beloved, David that day left out of his house a shepherd boy. On that same day, he came into the same house, an anointed king. Every day, God can turn your life around. I feel the virtue. Listen, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can turn your life around if you yield to him and say, let your will be done and not mine. When you, this is a true story. He got up as usual. Maybe he felt something. Feel something funny that day. He don't know. And when he comes into the house, there is the man of God saying, David, you or the king, oh my God, of Israel. From a shepherd boy to the king of God's chosen people. Every day people. You see, when you're seeking God's faith, you never know when God will give you a visit. And because you don't want to judge yourself by what you see or by what others say. That you want God to look inside your heart and to see what's in you that he can use. Well, everybody's busy. And uh, young girls going to the marketplace. This, this is another story. Going to the marketplace. This is story time. Going to the marketplace. Mind at home business. Don't know where mom and dad is, you see. Got to get back before late because my uncle is suspected. In the meantime, in the palace, the king had a dinner, a big party, and he had a very pretty wife. And he invited the queen over, and she refused to come. But this caused him to have to dethrone her, take her from the, the queenship. So he put out a decree I need a new wife. And he went all over the province having young women come get in line, clean themselves up, present themselves. And so this, this young girl said, her uncle said, listen, the king is looking for a new wife. I, I know we're servants, you know, we're, you know, under the Persian Empire, but go get in line and listen, girl, don't tell them who you are, what you are. Yes, uncle. She goes and gets in line and over to the hundreds of other girls Lo and behold, this servant girl in captivity 
has been chosen. Every day, people, you don't know what God has in store for you if you don't open up and surrender. And just give up on yourself and, and say, this is all life is. No, no, no. Until you seek God's face for God's will in your life, your life ain't over yet. I don't care how old you are. Moses was 80 years old when God sent the boys back to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. If you have not yet surrendered your heart to God and said, Lord, what is your will for me? You don't know what's in store for your life until you put it in the hands of God. You'd be surprised. And so now here we have a Jewish girl that's under captivity. Every day, pretty little girl. And a few months later, she is the queen of the Persian Empire. That would save her people from death. Little Esther, the niece of Mordecai, becomes Queen Esther, the deliverer of her people. She didn't expect that. She wasn't looking for that. Oh, I feel the virtue. Be careful how you entertain strangers, because some have had unexpected visitors entertain angels on the way. She didn't expect that. I'm here to tell you that right now, God can change your life and give you a life you never dreamed of right now. He can do it right now. He done it for me. He's done it for us. He can do it for you. Give yourself to God. Surrender your life and say, God, what is your will? And you would be surprised. God uses every day people. He was walking one day. And he was going by the seaport. And he saw a couple of brothers uh, near and sitting up there fishermen. He looked at these fishermen. They were just doing what they do. He says, follow me. Everyday people. Everyday people. These fishermen became some of the greatest preachers the world has ever seen. One day they were fishermen. And when this uh, thing could come walking by, they became fisher of men. And they were given the title of apostles. Lord, have mercy. What have you done with my master? Said the young. Where have you taken him? Mary, Rabboni, it is I. Go tell my disciples, I feel a virtue that I have written. I go to my father and their father. Mary takes off and she runs. And she tells his disciples, he has risen. She delivered the first resurrection message. He has risen. Uh -huh. Peter denied him, but she stayed up every step of the way. She was one of the first to the grave. And her story was told. Everybody knew Mary was the first. Mary was the first. And, and, and somebody said, wow. So tell me about this Mary. What qualified her to be the first to see the Lord? What, what's her background? Oh, she had seven devils. Come on, come on now. Mm. Huh? <laughs> she had seven devils. Come on. She, oh! <laughs> she had seven devils. Come. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> You mean to tell me that was that the mother crazy lady that used to run up and down? <laughs> that that Mary? Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She was a nobody. God uses everyday people. Oh, but God saw something in her. Hallelujah to God. She surrendered to God. And he cast out seven devils and made her a famous disciple. There's no major qualification. It's his choice. He looked at your heart. You have to be willing to surrender.
How about the warrior that didn't know he was a warrior? The Midianites had tormented the children of Israel, and every time the harvest come, they would come to take all the food. And so Gideon was hiding his food too. You know, hiding the wheat. So he had 70 sons, many wives, but hey, the saving bastard, well, don't get wolf, I'm gonna hide my food too. And he turned around, there was a, a man sitting next to him. I, 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 I'm just talking. And, and when the man called him at first, Gideon didn't answer because he thought he had the wrong person. <laughs> now here's Gideon hiding all his food. Uh huh. Uh, as far as he was concerned, he was a coward like the rest of them, looking at himself. Too. But the man looked at him and said, Gideon, yes. thou mighty man of valor. You talking to me? <laughs> I'm talking to you. Gideon said, where is the God of our fathers? I'm so mighty. Look what I'm doing. Where is the God of our fathers? Gideon. God has seen no you, an everyday man, a mighty warrior that would deliver his people. I feel the virtue. You see, you can come out of your house one way and come back another when you have a spiritual encounter with God. And Gideon, with 300 men and the power of God within, delivered the children of Israel. Every people what's inside of you you got a queen or king in your house or well, maybe you are a queen or king you'll never know until you surrender and say God I submit myself unto you just don't look at your life in this world and think it's over and, and, and until you have told God let your will be done not mine you don't know what God has in store You don't know what God has in store. How about the farmer that became great? This young boy was farming uh, 12 yoke of oxen. And he was just plowing it. Daddy and mama was in the house. And out of the woods come a stranger. Man out of nowhere. And the man takes his cloak and throws it on top of the farm boy. Now, that farm boy left the house, a farmer, plowing his land. But when this stranger came out of nowhere and threw his mantle upon him, that boy left the house, a farmer, but came back into the same house, a prophet that would be taught by the prophet Elijah. Elijah saw Elijah plowing the ground. The boy was plowing the ground. He didn't expect all of this. And next thing you know, something comes over his head, looks up, and there's the prophet. Oh, my goodness. Please. The right place at the right time. He ran into the house and told mom and dad, I got to go. The man of God just threw his cloak up on me. But you are a farmer. I guess God sees something else. Oh. But I guess God sees something else. Jesus. What does he see in you? God uses every day people. What does he see in you? God uses everyday people to do his will. But you'll never know. And the little girl in the corner. Let me close with this story. The little girl in the corner. There was a little girl in the corner who would watch her master come in every day. A great man and a mighty warrior. She was a Jewish girl, but the master was a Syrian and a leper, which was an abomination to the Jewish nation. And one day she saw him coming in and scratching and itching with leprosy all over. And, 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 and when we tell this story, everybody gives credit to the general. Ah. But the credit goes to an everyday little girl, a slave girl. Okay. And she looks up at this man and says, listen, oh, if you could go to Israel, there's a prophet 
that can heal you of all your disease. And to make a long story short, Nathan Walt goes over there, dumps himself seven times, comes back clean, and is converted to Judaism. Could you imagine what he thought when he went back home and he saw that little girl in the corner? He said, all alone, my answer to my deliverance was in the house and every day. Well, that's the end of the story for today. You can continue this lesson by submitting yourself to God. Thank you. God, I heard the apostle. What's in my house? Jesus took over behind you. God is my father. What's in my house? What is in my heart that you can use? Jacob laid down Jacob. But in the morning, he woke up Israel. Because there was a visitation. And God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. So I want you to listen for the knock on the wall, on the door. Look for that stranger that comes out of nowhere. Or that visitation that moves upon you. When you say, Lord, what will you have me to do? And God will show you a life that you never could have imagined. That he has for you. God bless you and be encouraged. You don't know what your life is until you submit to God. Surrender it to God and see what God has in store for you. There's more to you than just this world. I believe in miracles. I believe in the impossible. And Jesus is in control of all the affairs of man. Until next time, Atlanta, I want you to be blessed and listen. Your life is not complete until you surrender and see what God has for you. God bless you. You have been listening to Come Expecting a Miracle broadcast with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, Overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles Doctrine Incorporated at 8014 Rockbridge Road, Lithonia, Georgia, 30058. Join us each Sunday for our 2 p.m. miracle service and at 8 p.m. on Wednesday for Bible study. And for the 24-hour prayer line, call 770-912-0433. 770-912-0433. To make a donation to this ministry, you may do so at Tabernacle of David Church, P.O. Box 390156, Snailville, Georgia, 30039-9997. Or email us at Dr. L. Bryant at T-O-D-C-A-D-I-N-T-L dot com. Tune in each Saturday at 12.30 p.m. for an inspiring message of faith with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, Overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles Doctrine Incorporated, on WIGO 1570 AM, Atlanta's Incredible Radio.